Well, my guys were supposed to come up here, but I'll try to introduce them from the, from the table there. I asked my first team, uh, my 1983 team, to introduce me because, you know, when I came in in 83, I was just a young coach and, you know, trying to make, as Coach Mitchell said, an identity for myself. And if these guys had not bought into what I was selling, you know, I wouldn't be here tonight. But I asked them to also introduce me because they're just such a special group. They're so close. They've retained this closeness over all these years. And what I'd like to do is just kind of tell you what each of those guys have done quickly, but what each of those guys have done. Joe Leitze, who introduced me, played number one, was a senior. He became a successful real estate entrepreneur in Cincinnati. Our number two that year was another senior, John Varga, and he graduated from med school at the University of Louisville, but he graduated from med school <laughs> and, and started a concierge medical practice model that's being used all across the United States, but he was the first one to do it in Kentucky. Our number three on that team was Paul Varga. He's currently the CEO at Brown Foreman. Our number four on that team was Andy Jackson. Andy became my best friend in coaching. Uh, Andy's headed to the Intercollegiate Tennis Hall of Fame. He's taken both Mississippi State and Florida to SEC championships and Final Fours. Our number five is Mark Bailey, who's here tonight. First time I've seen Mark in 37 years. And Mark owns his own tennis club in Wisconsin. And the number six on that team was a guy named Patrick McGee, who's also here tonight. And he was named one of the top 40 under 40 sports executives by the Sports Business Journal. So while I'd like to think I did a really good job, I had a group of leaders that I just walked into, you know, that <laughs> pretty clearly were pretty successful. Um, I think that team is a team model for what, you know, Mitch, I, uh, all, all of us in coaching think what college tennis should be about. People who come in, come into the, to the program, they develop in the program, but they learn some things, whether it's on the court or off the court, they learn things that make them successful in life. Uh, I was at lunch with this team today. I've never had as much fun as I've had with those guys. It was like 37 years was like yesterday. So the bond that that college, that team has, and I would like to think that bond that they have with me, which I really felt today, I have to tell you, I think that's what college tennis is all about. I think people who knew me in coaching would tell you I was pretty passionate about what I was doing. Um, I was passionate about winning. I was passionate about building a total program. I didn't want to just have a team of players that were in and out. Team, uh, you know, I didn't want to have a team that was just good on the court. I wanted to have a total program. And I gave that, this job everything I had, you know, to accomplish that, that. But there are several people who were game changers in my life and, and in, the, in the life of this program. And I wouldn't be standing here tonight if it were not for those people. So I want to recognize several of those. The first was Cliff Agan, and he was the athletic director then who hired me. I really prayed about getting this job. You know, I really felt like this is what was right for me. Mr. Hagen interviewed me three times, you know, for this job. Mitch, is that normal that you <laughs> interview? Some doubts in there somewhere, <laughs> okay. So, which was a grueling process for me, by the way. But um, he interviewed me three times. I know Mr. Hagen's a man of great faith. And I, I really believe that God led him to hire me for this position. Uh, you know, throughout my 30 years, I always felt like this is where I was supposed to be. This is where God led me to, to be and to, to lead my professional life. My daughter uh, is named Merritt Martha, and she's named after Martha the Hagen, and that's because of the great, tremendous impact that the Hagens had on the life of our young family. The second person who was just a real game changer for us was, was a gentleman named Hillary Boone. And in 1984, I went out to Wimbledon Farm, you know, just outside of town, and I shared my vision with him, and that vision was for UK to become an elite program. Um, 
being the northernmost school in the conference, you know, anybody who's coached here in Springs Board understands what that means. Uh, being the northernmost school, I shared with Mr. Boone that we wanted to be eventually one of the best teams in the country, but for right now, we would settle for being one of the best indoor teams in the country. Uh, we met one time for an hour, and literally we spoke, uh, Billy Evans went with me, we spoke for probably 55 minutes about Kentucky basketball and Billy Evans' career here. And after talking five minutes about the tennis, Hillary threw in 500,000. Uh, on the spot, by the way, he got Mr. Hagen to match it. So the first part of the dream, an on-campus facility was in place. Uh, I always felt like that was an answer to prayer. You know, at that time, there were very few on-campus facilities, so we were kind of out of the box. It was a unique thing. And I think, and I'm almost positive this is correct, the Boone Center was the first athletic facility on this campus named for a donor. Ten years later, Hillary uh, was the lead gift on the beautiful outdoor center that we have over there. He paired with a gentleman named Tom Arrington, who a friend of mine, uh, Herb Case, had grown up with Mr. Arrington, and he got Mr. Arrington interested in our tennis program. And Mr. Arrington made his first gift to the university that way. And he also paired with the Ryan Holder Foundation and for that special facility. So you can understand what, how, what a great debt I owe to Hillary Boone. The third, the third person who was game changer for us is actually two. And that's Don and Shirley Varga. Not because they gave birth to the three brothers over here who played for me. The brothers combined for, when they were here, 355 singles wins in their time at UK. And that, I don't know that they keep records on brothers at, you know, programs, but that has to be some sort of NCAA record, you know. If it's not, you know, Evan, I've told Evan, Evan Crane we're going to claim that one. So... Uh, also, Andrew won our first ever SEC singles championship in 1997, which was a, a huge breakthrough for our program. Andrew's here tonight. But the impact goes way beyond the Varga family, goes way beyond, you, you know, having the children come here. Um, remember my dream, when I came here, my dream, my vision that I was asking people to buy into was that we wanted to be the best indoor team in the country. And I shared my vision of hosting the national team indoors for the top 16 teams in the country with Don Varga and his wife, Shirley. They had the nicest tennis club in Louisville, 12 courts, 1,000 seats. It was absolutely perfect for this. And at that time, you know, and our guys may remember this, at that time, the national indoor championships were played outdoors at UCLA. So. You know, they were anxious to move it if they could find an indoor facility. And for the next 17 years, Don and Shirley Varga ran the national indoors at their club in Louisville. You know, what it allowed us to do was we we're the northernmost school, so we we're competing outdoors with outdoor teams all the time. And I always felt like if we could get those outdoor teams indoors, we had a great chance. And... What it did is it allowed us to play the best outdoor teams in the country. Every year, we beat those teams like clockwork on what I think Paul and everybody over there would agree was the, probably the fastest indoor courts in the country. You know, it was just the biggest, as, as Andy Jackson would say, this just almost a scam, having these teams, <laughs> you know, come in from California and play us on those, on those fast courts. So we beat, like say, Stanford, Georgia, Southern Cal, Florida, many, many others. But, you know, as I look back, I think that was the single biggest factor in us going from where we were and in our rise to becoming a top 10 program and a perennial top 10 program, top 15 program, I'm sorry. You know, where I'm at right now in my life, I get asked all the time, you know, well, what are you doing? And, you know, a lot, a lot of people don't seem to know what I'm doing. So I'm doing two things, really. The first thing I'm trying to do is reconnect our former letterman back to our athletic department. And a big part of that is the oral history project that Dwayne Peavy has allowed me to, to take and run with. Uh, I'm doing this with Kyle Macy 
and, and Keith Madison. You know, it's, it's just been a, a great thing for me to hear these stories. I, I love sitting in on them. But we have a very, very special athletic history at UK. It's, it's like no place else in the country. And I think it needs to be captured, and that's why I'm just so thrilled to be a part of that. I'm also doing fundraising for our new tennis center and, and potentially down the road Memorial Coliseum renovations. And, you know, I love my job. I love what I'm doing. When I got out of coaching, it was very difficult for me. I've been a Division I head coach for 35 years, and, you know, I, had, I really struggled sort of with that transition a little bit. But, you know, I love my job. I love what I'm doing. And first of all, I believe in our mission. I've personally seen how college tennis and college sports impact the lives of young people. I'm the first person in my family to ever go to college. You know, I couldn't have done that without an athletic scholarship. You know, I've had this amazing, you know, to me, I've had this amazing, blessed journey, and none of it happens without, you know, college tennis and college sports. The second reason I really love what I'm doing is I believe wholeheartedly in what we're doing in UK athletics. I believe in the culture that Mitch has created here. We have great coaches and staff. They do things the right way. We do things that way for the right reasons. And as I'm going out and talking to people, it's easy for me to talk to our special donor base of people like uh, Adam Hunt, who's here tonight, Marty Johnson, people who are really into what we're doing. And uh, it's because of the values. I think it's the values that we have here that Mitch has moved to the forefront. And it's easy to share that. We share those values with a lot of our supporters. Um, I just have two more things. I want to thank Dwayne Peavy for making my job so meaningful to me. I think he's a superstar. I think he's a special leader. I think we're very lucky to have him here. You know, I, I hope he's here for a long, long time. Um, I want to say thank you to Eric Quigley. You know, he's another one. If he's not there, I'm probably not standing up here tonight if he doesn't come to the University of Kentucky. So I want to congratulate Eric. I want to congratulate you. No one is more deserving of this honor tonight. You know, I was with you every day for four years. You know, I can tell you, you're the winningest college player, singles player in, in the history of college tennis. And you did it 100% of the time with class. I can't remember one time, you know, that we ever, I ever felt like, wow, that's questionable, you know, in a match or anything. There never anything like that. You know, I, and all of us, I, I wish I could say that about myself, actually. Um, <laughs> the, one, the, one thing I, the one thing I would say, and I think Eric would, would say this also, is, you know, that we really miss. We had a great guy on our team who was teammates with Eric, a guy named Bruno Augustinelli. I think we both wish he could be here tonight to share this with us. Thank you.